Hi, my name is Kelly McIllicott and I'm one of the educators with Bywater Solutions and I have this tutorial on how to edit frameworks within Koha. Today's tutorial will show you how to edit um, a framework within your Koha system to fit your needs. When you get your Koha system, there are frameworks already set up, however you can customize them for how you would like them set up when using the, each framework. So I'm going to go ahead and show you an example of what I mean. So I'm going to show you using my fast add framework. So I'm going to go to my cataloging module and I'm going to choose the new record and then this is where your frameworks um, will be listed and I'm actually going to choose that fast add framework. Now, if your library uses fast add, then you'll notice that it's a you'll know that it's a very short um, mark record because we're trying to do this quickly and get the book um, into the patron's hands. Now you can see I have a few fields that are available for me to fill out. However, I can see that I have a local assigned LC type call number and we are a Dewey library, so I should probably delete this. 090 field from my fast add framework. Another thing that I, I notice is you see how the 100 field, the 100A is populated to for me to easily fill that in. However, my 092 um, does not have a field for me to easily put in. I would need to click this 092 and then the call number, the subfield A and the call number field will appear. This is what's called um, that the 092 is collapsed or hidden in the cataloging. So I prefer to have this easily shown right when I go into the fast add framework. So these are two things that I can change in my fast add framework to help the process um, go a little bit smoother during my cataloging um, procedure. So again, I want to delete this 090 because I don't actually need that and I want to make this 092A um, visible when I go into this record. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. So now that I know what I want to change, I'm going to go ahead and go to this more drop down menu and I'm going to go into the administration module. Within the Koha administration module, I have this option of mark bibliographic framework and that's where I can go ahead and edit and or create a new framework. So again, you can see all the frameworks that are listed in your system. Now, some of these you may never use. Um, you may just primarily use that default framework, which would be the most comprehensive framework that we have. But there is something as known as the fast add framework. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to edit a framework. So here under this actions button, um, the, I have a couple different options. I can go to the mark structure. I can edit it. I could delete a framework. Please do not delete your default framework. You can export it and import it. I really like this export and import because you can actually um, duplicate a framework using the export and import um, if you wanted to go ahead and create, say, an ILL framework um, for your interlibrary loan. And I have a tutorial, blog tutorial on how to do that set up on the Bywater Solutions website, which I'll link in this, um, in this video for you. But that would just involve you exporting one and importing it. And I go through those steps um, <coughs> in that blog post. If I were to choose edit the fast add framework, it's actually just going to let me change the description. It's a little misleading. So I'm going to use that mark, um, my breadcrumbs and go back to my mark framework. And then I'm actually going to go to mark structure. So then I actually get to see all the mark fields that are included in that fast add framework. And you see I only have 18. If I had multiple pages, I could go ahead and search for the tag up here. Um, say I wanted to go to the 500 quickly um, in the default. This would allow me to find that very quickly. But since all my fields are right here on the screen, I won't need to use the search for a tag. So here's the 090. I actually don't need the 090 in my fast add framework. So I'm going to go over to my actions and I can go ahead and just delete that. And it's as simple as that. It's going to confirm. Are you sure you want to delete this? 
yep, I have no use for a locally assigned LC number at my Dewey library. So that's deleted, all set. It's completely gone from my mark fields and my mark framework for my fast add. Now I can see my 092, my local Dewey, and I'm going to go here. And again, if you choose edit, you're just going to change the text that is here. Um, so we're actually going to go to our subfields. So this would list any subfields like the A, the B, the Z that are in this mark field. The 092, I just have that A subfield. I can see the text which shows when I catalog and the constraints. And this is just a summary. I'm going to go ahead and hit edit here and this says hidden, which is what I showed you that I actually had to click the 092 for for that field to populate. So we're going to get rid of that hidden. I'm going to go up to the edit action button. So here I have that A, the text here. If I wanted to make the 092 repeatable or mandatory, I could go ahead and do that. What it's what tab it's managed in, usually in that fast add framework, most of the things are are in that zero tab because it's nice and easy. But as you go into the default, you may have things in the, the 500 fields would be in the 5 tab. I'm going to go to that advanced constraints. And here, the visibility is where I want to go. I have that it is collapsed. So if I go ahead and unclick my collapsed option and save my changes, then it's going to automatically populate with that blank field for me when I use my fast add framework, which is exactly what I wanted to do. A couple of other visibility, if I didn't want it to be um, able to be edited, I could go ahead and um, unclick that. If I didn't want it to be seen on the OPAC or the, um, the staff side, I could unclick those. But really, I'm just concerned with this um, collapsed one, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit save changes. I'm going to go to my fast add framework structure, use those breadcrumbs. So I've made those changes. My next step, before I go ahead and test my changes um, using the cataloging module, I actually need to test the framework changes I've made in Koha. So over here on the left are all my administration um, options, and I have this option called Mark Bibliographic Framework Test. Once I hit this, it will let me know that any changes that I made to any frameworks, if it's okay or not. If I don't get an okay, um, I should definitely stop and see what is the problem or put in a ticket with Bywater and let them figure out what happens. But before you use your cataloging module, always, always, always check this framework test to make sure that any changes you made are okay. And I got an okay all the way. I got a big okay here. So I'm good to go. Now I'm gonna go up to my more and use that cataloging module. I'm gonna to go to my new record, record and that fast add framework. Okay, and now I see that I don't have that 090 field as well as the 092 is that field is already populated so I can easily go right to it. So this is a great way um, to go ahead and edit your frameworks and make them customizable for your library's needs. Thank you very much for watching. This tutorial is a production of Bywater Solutions. Have a great day.